Uh, yeah, so, so last lecture, we discussed uh, uh, Lossa theorem. Uh, for every symmetry, for every continuous symmetry, uh, there's a conserved current, okay? And then we also started talking about uh, uh, relativistic quantum mechanics, uh, um, how we want to unify special relativity and the quantum mechanics, okay? So the most immediate idea for that is uh, uh, what's called the uh, relativistic quantum mechanics. And the most immediate generalization of the Schrodinger equation, so if you have, so, so at the end of last lecture, we talk about, say, the most immediate generalization of the Schrodinger equation, which, uh, 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 so, the, so if you have e, square, e equal to, say, p squared divided by 2m, and then you go to non-relativistic uh, 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 quantum mechanics, uh, a Schrodinger equation, okay? And now if you have E squared equal to P squared plus M squared for relativistic particle, and then you get what's called the Klein-Gordon equation. And again, this psi, has the imputation of the uh, 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 of the wave function, so this describe, and then this, so if you ask the generalization of this, then this means to describe the um, the quantum mechanics of a uh, relativistic free particle, say of mass m, okay, of mass m. So here the psi t x is the wave function. of a relativistic particle. Relativistic particle of mass n. Okay? And we also notice that this equation actually is the same as the simplest field theory equation. So we also talked about uh, simplest scalar field theory, classical. So here is a, 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 a simple, a simplest, a, a classic, simplest uh, scalar field theory. So this theory you can write down an action of the form. Uh, this is the simplest theory you can write down, and then a uh, uh, relativistic invariant theory, and then the equation of motion of this. Uh, uh, so this is a you view this as a classical field, and again this has the equation motion have the exact the same form uh, uh, as this equation. So but now here phi again is a function of t x now has a completely different physical interpretation. So here is the, uh, 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 this is a classical field. Okay, so this is a classical field. Okay, so in this case, the interpretation of the x in here and in here is very different, okay? So, so not only phi and the psi, the uh, physical interpretation are different. Uh, the physical interpretation of x also here are different. Here x is just a label, it's a label for the for the location in the space uh, which uh, which we define this field, but here the x is the eigenvalue of the uh, position uh, uh, operator for this relativistic particle. Okay, and so they have very different physical interpretation. And so let me just label this equation by one, so label this by two, and this by two prime. Okay. So we also mentioned that this one has uh, 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 the interpretation of this as the wave function for relativistic, yeah, for relati yeah, as the equation for relativistic quantum mechanics has a number of difficulties. So the first is that, uh, as you will show in your piece at two, uh, uh, there's no sensitive no sensible way 
to define a positive definite probability density. Okay. So if you want to interpret this as a wave equation, then you must have a weight, uh, then you must have a probability density because in quantum mechanics, probability should be conserved. Okay. And the second difficulty is that there's a negative energy state because of the square. Because when you take the square root, then you get the minus sign, and then there's a negative energy state, which you cannot avoid in quantum mechanics, uh, uh, even though classically you can just throw them away by hand. Okay? And the third thing we mentioned at the end. He said for a relativistic wave equation, you can describe fixed number of particles so the particle number cannot change. Okay, so so this wave, so this equation uh, uh, describes a single particle, and if you want to describe two particles then you need to write down a separate equation for a different wave function. So this is for the two particle wave function will be like this, okay, and etc. okay. But this does not really make sense in the relativistic system because we know that uh, uh, in the relativistic system E equal to mc square, any case you have enough energy, then you should be able to create particles. And then that means the number of particles in the given process uh, is not conserved. Okay, so if you want to use your quantum mechanics to describe a process, and then that's, uh, uh, you cannot have a formalism which the number of particles is fixed, which you cannot change. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so this is actually the most fundamental difficulty, okay, is that you cannot change the number of particles. And related to this difficulty is this interpretation here we say, now if you want to do, we say in here, there's a fundamental asymmetry between the T and the X, okay, also, yeah, maybe let me put it as four, there's also fundamental, an additional difficulty, there's a fundamental asymmetry between T and X, So, so here, in the wave equation, T is just a parameter, which we describe the evolution. But the X is the eigenvalue of a quantum operator, uh, uh, eigenvalues of quantum operators, say, uh, 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 corresponding to, say, hat. By putting a hat, we denote the corresponding uh, uh, quantum operator. Yeah, so, so this is the eigenvalue of position operators. And this asymmetry become even more prolonged, say, if you can see the two particles. Okay, you have two x here, but there's only one t. Okay. But, so, uh, so those, because of those fundamental difficulties, okay, so if you connect this one to four, so we, connect, uh, uh, we conclude that the um, relativistic Quantum mechanics defined in the sense that you write down a wave equation, and for for a wave function, don't even uh, does not uh, uh, does not cannot be a fundamental description. Okay, but yeah, but right, this quantum mechanics just refers to this kind of wave equation. Okay. So at the most, this can be approximate approximation. At the most, this is approximate description in situations. Say there's no 
there's no uh, particle creation or uh, 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 annihilation. So, so in case which is your particle number is fixed, and then the, uh, then you can use this as approximation. Okay, but it cannot be a fundamental description. For example, uh, later we will talk about the fermionic version of this wave equation. So this will de uh, describe a particle without spin. So later we will describe the, uh, the analogous equation for electrons uh, for spin half. And uh, then, uh, then that can indeed be used to describe electron in the hydrogen atom uh, as, uh, as far as you don't create new electrons, etc. Anyway, so, so, so relativistic quantum mechanics can only be described as some kind uh, considered as approximate description. But now if you want to unify special relativity and the quantum mechanics together, it turns out that the right formulation is just quantum field theory. Okay. So it turns out that the quantum field theory, uh, 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 quantum field theory uh, uh, addresses these difficulties. Okay. Okay. So it turns out, it turns out that the right way, so if you want to describe quantum mechanics, say of relativistic particles of mass m, okay, as we want to do here, it turns out the proper thing to do, which is a little bit unintuitive at first sight, is to start with this field theory, okay, which seemingly have nothing to do with relativistic particle, but to start with this classical field theory and then quantize it, okay? It turns out, turns out once you treat this theory as a quantum field theory, and this becomes a theory of arbitrary number of relativistic particles of mass m, okay? And so that's the non-intuitive part, by, and, the, uh, and that's the, uh, uh, one of the miracles, say, of the field theory, is it, that automatically give you a formalism for, uh, for treating arbitrary number of particles, okay? And uh, um, yeah, um, and also in field theory, so both t and x are parameters. Okay, even though x only labels your uh, 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 your location, so both t and x are parameters, and so you can uh, easily to make them to be on equal ground to be compatible with special relativity. Okay, um, good. So any questions on this? Okay, so we will see that the, uh, the right framework is quantum field theory, okay. So finally, as the last motivation for quantum field theory, we quickly uh, 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 describe the last, uh, uh, so the field theory can also arise as a limit of discrete systems. Okay, and this is the uh, 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 the most relevant for condensed matter physics, for example. So, so let's just consider, say, uh, some yeah. Let's consider A O three example. Okay, so let's imagine you have this number of particles, uh, a number of the atoms, say on the on the chain. Okay and then they're con uh, connected by some spring between them. Okay, so, uh, so this is the, uh, 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 the pro yeah, uh, uh, consider this to be infinite, okay. And the, the uh, spacing between them, say, is A. The atom are fixed on some lattice point, and the lattice spacing is A, okay. So, so, yeah, so we can label the article, uh, say, uh, 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 each particle by their position. For example, this is x0, this is x1, this is x2, etc. Okay. And, uh, and the typical particle is xn. Uh, the location of uh, nth particle is xn. And uh, so we can also introduce the deviation between the equivalent position of each particle. So let's call it eta n. Okay. So now let's consider the dynamics of eta n for this theory. 
And so this is a just deviation of the nth particle from its equivalent position. Okay, uh, so x and zero is its equivalent position. So now, so now if you write down the Lagrangian for this system, so we can easily do, you just write T minus V, so T is the kinetic energy, and V is the, uh, um, the potential energy. So we can just write it as sum over N over all particles, and then let's assume they have the same mass, let's write mu eta n dot square. Okay, so this is a kinetic term, so, so mu is the mass for each particle. And then their, their potential, yeah, let's assume at each point there is also, uh, yeah, let's just, yeah, then there's some uh, 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 interaction, so because each particle are connected by the spring, and so their uh, harmonic force between neighboring particles, okay? And now let's imagine also there's a harmonic potential which trap this particle itself at each location. Okay, so this is a very simple uh, uh, spring and the particle problem which you encounter, say, in 803. Okay, is this problem clear? Okay, I, I assume most of you have seen this problem before. And, uh, and your task in 803 is actually to, uh, to find the, low, uh, the lower modes, say, of this system, okay. And in 803, you also described that we can, in A go to zero limit, say if the lattice spacing is very small, and if you are only interested in the behavior of this system at a very large distance, say the distance much larger than A, could, uh, uh, much larger than A, then you can essentially treat this system as a continuum. Okay, you don't have to resolve individual particles. And uh, so we can just in the equal to new limit, so you can treat the chain. as a continuum of particles. Okay? And, uh, and uh, so you, so each eta nt, you replace it by eta xt. So x label is position, okay? Uh, so x label is position and t uh, describe the dynamics. Okay, so, so eta is the deviation uh, 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 at the location x, and it's dependent on t. Okay, so this is the oscillator. And then sum over n in the Lagrangian, then we can replace it by integral over dx. Okay, and now you just treat this as a one-dimensional continuum, the uh, integration of dx. But of course here there's a label, a uh, uh, lattice space thing, so so the, uh, so the in, uh, uh, infinitesimal uh, uh, here, uh, the element is A. So A times the sum over N, uh, uh, you can replace it by dx, okay? A is the lattice spacing. And now you can just write this Lagrangian in terms of continuum theory, okay? Uh, now you can write this Lagrangian in the continuum theory and then let's just do it. So, um, so we can write it, yeah, let me just write one more step. So you can write it as sum over A, we take the A factor out because the A factor out have to be changed into uh, integration. And then you have one half, mu divided by A, eta n squared, minus one half lambda A, so, so uh, I just slightly rewrite It's Lagrangian, so that it's easy to take the continuum limit. So we have taken the factor of A out, but for this term, because this concerns the difference between the two, and we also divide it by A uh, in the downstairs, and then we need to multiply A upstairs, and then there's A in the front, okay? And now the continuum limit, you can just replace this by integral. And now you just, you can just write it as one half mu tilde eta dot square. So now eta n just replace it by eta xt. And here, let me call it lambda tilde partial x eta square. And this term, we can just replace it by the derivative of eta. And then this is just become one half C 
sigma tilde is a square. Okay? And the, uh, uh, the mu tilde, of course, is mu divided by A. Lambda tilde is lambda times A. And sigma tilde is the sigma divided by A. Okay, so the continuum limit is that those quantity has to be fixed. Okay, the tilde the quantity has to be fixed. And then we have a continuum Lagrangian. Okay, and then we have a classical field theory. And this theory is essentially the same as, as that theory. Okay, so if you take this factor mu tilde out, okay, if we take this factor mu tilde out, okay, so let me just take this factor mu tilde out in the front, just up to of all factor. And here is lambda tilde by, uh, uh, divided by mu tilde, we could, let's call it V square. And then this becomes sigma tilde divided by, uh, uh, by mu tilde, let's call it M square. So, so the V square is equal to mu tilde is equal to the uh, lambda tilde divided by mu tilde. And the M square is equal to sigma tilde divided by mu tilde. Okay, and then this is just uh, essentially identical to that theory when v equal to one. Okay, so when v equal to one become the same as just two. Okay, equation two. So v equal to one, of course, corresponding to relativistic case, uh, speed of light. But in general, uh, 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 this describe uh, can yeah uh, uh, this in. Uh, I can describe a uh, uh, continuum, uh, 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 but in general, this is a non relativistic. Yeah, in general, this can be just a non relativistic field theory. Okay, for other values of b. Okay. So this is. So this, even though this example is very simple, but this is actually a, a, a very general way that we can treat condensed, many condensed matter systems, which often involve a lattice, say, because because the solid. Uh, you can imagine all the atoms are on the lattice, etc. And if you're only interested in the very uh, a microscopic behavior, then you can treat solid as a continuum. Okay. And then, and now you can, uh, uh, now if you're interested in the quantum mechanics of such a system, then the quantum field theory uh, then naturally arises. Okay. Good, any questions on this example? Yes? So the limit that v goes to 1 is the same as lambda and mu being equal to 2. So what is that, I guess, for the green? Sorry? So v, the limit of yeah, v yeah, goes yeah, to yeah. 1 is like the same lambda as the same as mu? Yeah, yeah. So what does that physically mean? So you're saying the strength of... Yeah, yeah, just corresponding to the, uh, the case that the... Um, uh, uh, yeah, it just tells you that the relativistic limit is special. Happens at a very special point. But I guess why why is that the relativistic limit? Like to me, lambda is like the strength of your spring, and then yeah. mu is your mass. So right. Like, them being comparable, how is, is that? Yeah. Is that the same thing as the relativistic. Yeah, there's not much you can read from here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it it just like uh, when you choose some special parameters, then you can uh, uh, have a relativistic limit. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so these are all um, scalars, right? So uh, you, can, you can also have, uh, uh, you can also, uh, you mean, uh, you can also have tensors or vectors, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, what would you treat with this? Like phonons? Oh, you can treat, yeah, for example, you can treat phonons. You can also treat spins. And say, uh, for, for example, if you have an icing model, just consider the lattice of spins. And then the average spin, and then you can treat it as a scalar field, and then again you can write down a field theory. Yeah. And actually, the, the, the breakthrough of the phase transition uh, in condensed matter physics to, to, to understand what phase transition is really about and describe the behavior near the phase transition and precisely coincided with the development of field theory. And uh, yeah, actually uh, increased our understanding of quantum field theory. Yeah. Good. Other questions? Okay, good. Just to summarize what we have discussed so far, 
all paths leads to QFT, okay? So we have described three paths, three paths, but they're pretty general. First is that the quantum dynamic, uh, uh, we of our interest in uh, quantum dynamics of some classical fields say such as say electric magnetic field or space time metric if you are interested in gravity etc okay so 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 uh, in this case we already have the classical field theory but we know the world is quantum and we want to understand what's the quantum version of it. And the second is that it unifies special relativity plus quantum mechanics, okay? So you need the field theory to, uh, to unify them. And the third way is that it's the, uh, a large distance description. of discrete systems. Okay, so um, yeah, just combine all three elements together, they cover many, many areas of physics. Okay, they cover many, many areas of physics. Good, so, so now we can say a little bit about the plan for the whole semester. Okay, so here is the plan. So, so, so this is like a just rephrase of the outline, uh, which uh, uh, so so the first thing we do in chapter two. So here is chapter one. In chapter two, we discuss the simplest field theory. Just discuss this equation two, okay? Uh, uh, the theory of two, okay? Two and the two prime. Yeah, uh, 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 the prime is its equation motion. So, so, yeah, we, in physics, we always start with a simplest example. Okay, we always start with simplest example, and, uh, and so that uh, uh, is the one we will start with. So what we will see is that this describes That field theory describes spinless. There's no free massive particles. Okay. Okay. So we will see when we quantize that theory too, and then we get a theory of free massless or uh, free spinless massive particles. Okay. So you say, oh, that's a little bit boring because in this series, free, the particle, uh, by free means they don't intact, okay? Uh, the particle, they just don't intact. And then in chapter three, we will add in uh, uh, interactions. We will describe how to treat interactions, okay? So we will introduce interactions and tell you how to treat the interactions between those particles. Then in chapter four, we go to the real physics. So this scalar field is also real. Say, for example, can be used to describe the Higgs boson, okay? But the Higgs boson maybe is a little bit far from what we, uh, uh, you normally think about. So in chapter four, we will uh, uh, go to something which is much closer we are talk about the theory of electron. So this is called the Dirac theory. So this theory describes free but spin half particles, okay? So this is a theory of electron, okay? Uh, uh, when we neglect its interactions, okay? So this is the free spin half particles. And then, then we move on to the Maxwell theory. Uh, Maxwell theory. So 
this is the theory of the quantum electric and magnetic field. Okay. So when you quantize the Maxwell theory, say without source, the vacuum Maxwell theory, and you find you get free, again, there's no interaction, masses spin one particle. You get a theory of massively spin one particle. So this is what we call the photon. Okay, so this is the quantum for electromagnetic field. Okay, and then uh, uh, and then sorry, uh, did I? So this should be chapter five now. I think I lost my count. So now go to chapter six. We combine the four and the five together. Okay, combine electrons. So photon normally we uh, we do, uh, denote by gamma. Uh, 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 combine the a theory of electron and a, uh, a photon together, and then plus interactions between them, and then we get the uh, so-called quantum electrodynamics. So this is called QED. So QED is very general, essentially it covers all the quantum phenomena, uh, uh, yeah, uh, a microscopic phenomena up to say weak interactions and strong interactions. If you go, don't go inside the nucleus, and uh, 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 or don't go to a very high energy, I think that covers uh, uh, essentially most of the physics. And uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, and uh, and then then we will uh, describe how to yeah, uh, and then that will be the uh, the end of this uh, 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 course. So do you have any questions on this? Okay, so this is a roadmap. Yes? Do these chapters correspond to also chapters in the textbook or just chapters in the lecture notes? The chapters in the lecture notes, yeah. yeah. Right. Good, other questions? Yes? Sorry? Is gluon included with those free masses spin one particle? Yeah, gluon is also massless spin one, but gluon actually they interact with themselves. Mm -hmm. And so gluon is uh, different. So, so gluon, uh, to describe gluons, you have to wait for quantum field theory too. And uh, so, so the thing about the photon is that the photon don't interact with itself, but the gluons interact with itself. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so essentially we treat everything Except gluons, yeah. Other questions? Other questions? Okay, good. So now we can just move to chapter two. Now we are talking about this theory. Okay, so so actually I should not erase it. So now we talk about this theory. So because because this theory describes free particles, so we call it free scalar field theory. Okay, so, so, so this is the theory we are interested in. So, so now we will describe how to quantize this theory, okay? Good. So, so first, we will quickly go through the, uh, the quantization of harmonic oscillator, which you should already have done. In your in your p set, and so uh, uh, so we can do it relatively fast. So condensation of harmonic oscillator in the Heisenberg picture. So we will see that once we understand this example in the right way, and then quantize in this field theory become trivial. Okay, and the uh, quantize in this field theory become trivial. Okay, so, so let's start with quantum uh, 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 harmonic oscillator. For simplicity, I take the mass to be one and the take the frequency to be one, okay? Yeah, yeah, let me put the frequency here, one third. Okay, let's take the mass to be one, okay? 
And uh, so, so for this series, so, so this is a simple harmonic oscillator, which you have seen it uh, 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 maybe for the most of your intellectual life. And so P will be x dot, so momentum, the conjugate momentum is x dot. And so the Hamiltonian is the P square divided by two half one half omega square x square, okay? And the equation motion is x dot double dot equal to x squared. Okay? So, so let's first look at this theory, uh, 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 look at harmonic oscillator as a classical theory. So for classical theory, we know how to solve this equation. We just need to solve this equation, the classical solution. Just given by xt equal to a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. And a and, a and b just some integration constant. And for convenience, I can also write it in the complex form. Write it as following, equal to a exponential minus i omega t plus a star exponential i omega t. And a is some complex constant. And again, it's a, a integration constant. I just rewrite the integration constant slightly differently. Okay? So these are just integration constants. So now, yeah, so this is a complete solution of the problem. So now let's go to quantum. So when we go to quantum, and then, then we replace, then this classical dynamic variable then become the, uh, the Heisenberg operator, become the quantum operator, in particular in the, uh, in the Heisenberg picture, and then, uh, then, then this operator will depend on time, okay? And now this equation become operator equation, okay? So now let's, maybe I should label my equation. So now this star become the operator equation. Now star is the operator equation for x hat. So you have exactly the same equation as a classical equation, but now the interpretation is different. And now, now the x hat become the, uh, uh, now the x become the operator equation. So now the solution, now let me call this star star. So this still solves that equation, okay? So this still solves that equation except so these are just C numbers because, because this is a function of T, these are just C numbers. But now X becomes the, uh, uh, so now quantum mechanically, so this become now becomes the quantum solution. Okay, so now it ha hat, so, so this still solves that equation. So quantum mechanically this become a hat. Okay. And so this still solves that equation, but these are C numbers. The left hand side is the operator, and it can only be that A hat and B hat are operators, and also A uh, uh, must be operators, and the star will replace it by dagger. Okay, so now, say, now A, you just go to A hat, and A star goes to A dagger, A hat dagger. Okay, now these are, these are integration constants for the operator equations. So they are just, con now they become constant operators. Okay, so, 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 so they're just constant quantum operators. Okay, they're just constant operators. So they are integration constants for your, for your uh, uh, quantum operator equations. So now the solution, so, the, uh, uh, so now the, uh, 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 yeah, so now this is your quantum solution, okay. 
So this is the form we will often use, okay? You can also use that form, but uh, the equivalent, uh, but this is the form we will often use, okay? You can also, from here, you take the derivative, we can find the P. So again, this is become an operator equation. You take the derivative on X hat, uh, uh, X, uh, and maybe uh, uh, you find P, et cetera, okay? Yeah, so you, the P hat P, Take a derivative. Okay, you, uh, and then you can just work it out. It's very easy. So now, so this equation just. So we already solved the quantum problem. Okay, so so because we find the full evolution, full solution to the quantum operator equation. Except that we still need to impose the canonical condition, condition. So this is just equal to i. Okay, so, so the standard, uh, so if you plug in the expression for x and the t uh, and the p into here, and then you find that a and a dagger, the commutator is equal to one. Okay, so this is your familiar uh, 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 creation and relation operator for, for harmonic oscillator, okay, for harmonic oscillator. And, uh, uh, and now we can also use the A to build the Hilbert space. So because A are the, yeah, because all your operator now, all, because X and the T, X and the P are expressed in terms of A and A dagger. So essentially any operator of this series can all be expressed in terms of A and A dagger, okay? And then we can just use A and A dagger because A and A dagger essentially uh, they, they, they are fundamental building block of your full quantum theory. And then we can also use that to build the Hilbert space. So the Hilbert space is defined by uh, the lowest state is annihilated by A. And then, and then, the, then the higher state uh, Uh, obtained by acting a dagger on the on the on the ground states. Okay. So 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 this is your full theory. Okay. So this is your full theory. And uh, so now now uh, you can compute anything in this theory just with those knowledge. Okay. Just with those knowledge. So any questions on this regarding the harmonic oscillator? Good. Okay. So, so, so let me just summarize. So this is maybe very familiar, but let's summarize the rule we have been using, okay? S summarize the steps. Uh, in context of the harmonic oscillator. And then the, and then the same steps uh, can be used to context the, uh, uh, the field theory. Steps of quantization. So we make it a general. So first, so the zero step is that the, the classical EN, EO, e equation motion with quantum quantum operator equation. Okay. Then the first step is to find the most general solution. Find the most general solution to classical equation motion. Yeah, just to equation motion. Okay. And then Then when you go to quantum, and then you just promote the integration constants in your classical solution in one, in the step one, to constant operators. 
constant quantum operators, okay? So this gives the, uh, uh, then, then you have the full time evolution. At the quantum level, okay. So now you know the uh, how the quantum operator evolves, and then you impose canonical condensation. Conditions. Okay, so that will tell you the commutators between those integration constant operators. Okay, uh, uh, just as we do here, and then um, And then um, constant operators in Q. Now, now you know also know the commutation relation between them uh, among them, and then now can be used to generate the Hilbert space. So this step and one to four are very general, and if you can do it, and then you can uh, then you can essentially uh, uh, do it uh, apply to gen uh, any system. Say one degrees uh, harmonic also is one degrees freedom. You can apply to two degrees freedom, three degrees freedom, and also to field theory with infinite number of degrees freedom. Okay, and now we will apply this to field theory. Yes. Uh, for this procedure, you cannot, but uh, but uh, but uh, you can get the finite uh, uh, dimension. Yeah, be because the finite dimension here space don't have the classical analog. So here we start with the classical system and then we quantize it. And the uh, the uh, the, uh, the quantum system with the finite dimension here space, uh, uh, they're essentially intrinsically quantum. And uh, yeah, and like spin, uh, spin is an intrinsic quantum thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just because they don't have, yeah, it, 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 yeah. The reason is just they don't have classical counterpart. Yeah. Yes. Um, is it is it always true that the constant operator is sufficient to generate the entire Hilbert space? Yeah, because because if you think about it this way, yeah, uh, uh, that's a very good question. Because because let's just look at this uh, uh, harmonic oscillator, and then you can try to uh, uh, think and generalize it. Because. Because they are integrating constant of the x and the p, then any operator in your theory can all be expressed in terms of a and a dagger, and then uh, and then your Hilbert space must be uh, you must be able to generate the Hilbert space using them, yeah, yeah, yeah. because they are the building block of your uh, 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 of your whole operators. Yeah, yeah. How do you get the vacuum state? Like, is there is there always a generalization of vacuum state? Yeah, yeah. The vacuum state here is based on uh, uh, is come from the. Uh, 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 from the energy, right? So, so once we solve x and p, and then we can write the Hamiltonian in terms of x and p, and then you just look for the lowest energy state, and then you find the lowest energy state just satisfy this equation, yeah. And then from there you can find other states, yeah. Yeah, the same thing we are going to, yeah, the same strategy we are going to use for the uh, for quantum field theory. Okay, good. Okay, good. So, so now become a mechanical. We can just uh, uh, apply this to to this theory. Okay, we can just apply this to this theory. And now let me add here. So here, the canonical momentum density conjugate to phi is uh, I called the pi before. It's just the a time derivative of phi. And the Hamiltonian density you can find it explicitly is pi square plus one half.
Okay? And then this is a classical equation motion. Okay? So we can now let's just solve this classical equation motion. So this equation can be so this equation is easy to solve because of the uh, because of the translation symmetry. Okay, uh, 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 you can just do a Fourier transform. Okay, so we can Fourier transform. So so now let's do the um, we can Fourier transform the two prime can be solved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can just write phi x equal to exponential minus i e t plus i k dot x. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, um, okay. So, and then you you can see that this just solves the so this is provide. A basis of solutions to two to two prime. Okay, it's it, it just a plain wave. Okay, just plain wave. Uh, um, so now when you plug this into there, then you just get the dispersion relation. E square should be m square plus k square. Okay, so, so we'll denote this as omega k square. So omega k is defined to be just the uh, k square plus m square. Okay. So E, when you take the square root of E, so you can take plus minus omega k. Okay, can be plus minus omega k. So we normally call the solution, we normally separate so for historical reasons, okay, we normally call it, define UK X to be exponential minus I omega K T. X. Okay, now we have inserted the positive root of E. So this is normally called the positive energy solution. Even though this even though this name is a little bit misleading, okay, so so uh, uh, actually this we don't define the energy actually uh, uh, yeah later we will see this is not really the energy. Uh, 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 of a particle, and so uh, so this is just a traditional name. Okay, this is just a traditional name, conventional name, and then you can define the uh, complex conjugate of k. And now you have, then corresponding to you have uh, minus omega k in there. So we, yeah, we take just a complex conjugate. And so this is called the active energy solution. Okay? So all together, they form, uh, they form a complete set of solutions. Okay, so complete set of solutions. So complete basis, a complete set of, yeah, complete basis. Is formed by UK and the UK dagger, uh, UK star for all K. Okay, for all K. Okay, so these are the uh, when you uh, these are the complete set of solutions to that wave equation. Okay, so that's just the, the uh, um, yeah. The, the, uh, uh, any questions on this? So this is just like a, a classically, this is just like a wave, okay? Just like a plane wave, okay? 
which you should also have seen in A those three. Yeah. Uh, um, good. So now we can find the, so now we can write down the most general. So this is a basis. So these are the counterpart of the exponential plus minus omega t here. Okay, so now we can write down the most general solutions by just putting in the integration constant. So the most general. Classical solutions. So you can just write phi x equal to integrate of all possible value of k because this is for all k, so we just sum of all of them. And uh, so we so so this factor is for for just for convenience, okay? Uh, it's just uh, a convention. You don't have to put it here. It's just a convention. And then, and then we have a k u k plus a k star u k star. Okay, so this is just the most general set of solutions with a k and the a k star as integration constants. So this is a full set of the integration constants, okay? Good. So now, when you go to quantum level, so now we can just follow the rule. Okay, we find the, uh, the most general classical solution. And in the quantum level, we just promote the distribute operator. You just put a hat there and change this to dagger. Okay, so now this become your basis of quantum operators. Okay, so these are the const uh, the full set of constant uh, uh, quantum operators. And this solves your uh, uh, theory. Uh, uh, um, okay, so uh, uh, so this solves the uh, uh, the operator equation. Okay, this solves the operator equation. So now the next thing is to impose the canonical uh, commutation relation. So first we have to, uh, uh, now we have to do a little bit thinking, okay? So, so far it's just uh, straightforward. But now we have to do a little bit thinking. So, so for, for finite, for harmonic oscillator or, or for, for quantum system of a single variable, you just have x, you, you, you just have this. You just have this, and now we need to come up with the generalization of this to a field theory. Okay. So, so we need to come up with the generalization of that to field theory with corresponding to phi x. So now let me make the time and the spatial coordinates separate. And this conjugate momentum is phi, is pi. Okay. Conjugate momentum density. So we should do them at the same time. Remember, t is the, uh, is the same evolution operator, so they have to be evaluated at the same time. Or these are equal time. Uh, canonical uh, 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 condensation conditions always at the equal time. But x is a label of uh, operators, so, so x, they don't have to be the same, okay? Uh, so here can be x, here can be x prime, okay? So now we have to come up with a generalization of what is this quantity for field theory, okay? So, so now we just need to do a little bit of guesswork, okay? Uh, you can easily guess it. So before we do that, do you have any questions on this? Yes? Yeah, yeah, x is always, 
So x is always here. It's always just the, the label uh, uh, of the spatial location, right? Yes. Yeah, it's a label for the, yeah, yeah, it's your field theory label. Yes? So in this procedure, I guess you always end up with your operators as being constant in time. Is there any way that you can get them where it's like the evolution is more complex rather than just a constant operator and base factor? Yeah, so, so normally if you have second order differential equation, uh, you always have some integration constant. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So that carries forward all throughout? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Yes? Shouldn't it be obvious why the classical equation of motion translates directly into the operator equation of motion? Right, yeah, yeah. So that's a very good, uh, the, uh, uh, that's a very good uh, uh, um, question. So that's just extension of our usual procedure for the quantum mechanics. So, uh, so the usual procedure, when you, uh, even just for harmonic oscillator for single variable system, you have this correspondence between the classical system and the quantum system. When you quantize the classical system, then the classical equation motion become uh, a quantum operator equation. Uh, here, we just use the same rule. Uh, because quantum field theory is just the theory of infinite number of degree freedoms. Uh, we are not changing the rule of quantum mechanics. And uh, so that's why uh, we just, again, just promote the classical equation into the operator equation. Other questions? Yes? One way of understanding like the Heisenberg equation for the quantum mechanics is that really like the Poisson brackets for like the classical theory. Is there something like that for field theory as well? Um, so I guess the yeah, 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 there is, yeah. So, uh, so classically, you can define the Poisson bracket between the, uh, between the classical field variables. And then, and then quantum mechanically, just become uh, 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 quantum commutators. So is that like how we could come up with those computational relations? Yeah, 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 you can also do that. that uh, uh, that's right. Yeah, so, so one way to come to this is you first describe, uh, first you need to generalize your standard Poisson bracket for finite number degrees freedom to classical field theory, and then you can just generalize that to the uh, to quantum. Yeah, indeed, uh, 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 that's one route of doing it. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Good. So we will just guess the answer. Okay, the answer is very easy to guess. So so remember. So. Um, if you have a single x and a p, that's what you have, okay? But if you have more than one particles, if you have more than one particles, say just hint, say you have uh, multiple particles, system in quantum mechanics, and then you have xA and the PA as your dynamical variable. So A equal to one to say n, say the number of particles, okay? And then your canonical quantization condition just become xA T PB T equal to I delta AB. And the different xA is commute. And even the p commute, okay, even the p commute, okay? For some reason, let me just put this out. So, so now this a and the b, are essentially just replaced by x and x prime. So x and x prime are just continuum version of those a and b. Okay, remember, we can't emphasize the x and the x prime are the labels of your degree freedom. So now you can just guess. Okay, so we must have the following scene. So, so from here, we must have phi px 
phi tx prime must be 0, and the pi tx, so pi is the analog of p here. Pi, yeah, so those are operators. tx prime must be 0. And then phi tx with pi tx prime should be something can only be 0 when, when x not equal to x prime can only be non-zero when x equal to x prime, OK? OK, as a generation of this, OK? And uh, uh, so, so you can now you can guess, so what should this be? So what? Yeah? Direct delta? Yeah, this should be just direct delta, OK? But now you can ask the question, why has to be direct delta, maybe why should not be, say, the derivatives of Dirac data? OK. Say, why should not be, say, a hundredth derivative of Dirac delta? And that question can be addressed just by, uh, from dimensional analysis. So, so here, we know it's, somehow this must be related to Dirac delta. And now let's decide. So now you can do, the dimension, uh, do a little bit dimensional analysis. So, so if we just write down the action, yeah, the action I have just erased, sorry. <laughs> so, so if you look back on the action, let me just outline the idea, because, because I, I'm sure you can do dimensional analysis yourselves. So if you look at the action, so the action is dimensionless in the lateral unit we are using. So, so, if you, uh, uh, so from that, you can deduce the dimension of phi to be 1 over L, so 1 over the length, OK? And from the fact that the pi, where is pi? And maybe I'll also erase. It's equal to phi dot. Means pi should be dimension 1 over L square. OK, because you take the derivative on time, and then there's a lot of factor of L. Then that means on the right-hand side here must be something 1 over L to a cube. OK, because there's no other parameters here, OK? Uh, yeah, because uh, uh, here there should be an i, OK? And if it's a dimension uh, uh, 1 over cube, then it can only be the data function, not a hundredth uh, derivative of data function. So, 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 uh, so this thing should be the just a data function. Okay. So, so, um, so this is your, the convention that there should be an i, and then it should be just the three data functions. And this indeed have the dimension 1 over uh, 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 L cube. Good. So now you can just plug. So you have the expression for x for phi. You take the time derivative of this. You get the expression for, for pi. And now you can just plug them into here. You can just plug them into here, OK? And then you can find the commutation relation between those a k's, OK? And so this is a slightly tedious calculation, uh, which is However, a little bit fun, <laughs> which of course I will <laughs> leave you to do. <laughs> so, so if you just plug them in, and then you can deduce uh, the following commutation relation between A's. So, so this is the, uh, I think this is in PSAT 2, uh, but I can still change my mind. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to put in PSAT 2. So you find the, uh, the commutator between A and the commutator between A dagger. Yeah, so, so, so now I will suppress the hat, OK? Because at the right hat, I think uh, over and over, I will be too tired. So these are 0, OK? So the uh, commutation relation between A and 0, and A between between A and a dagger, so this gives you 2 pi cube, delta function in k. OK, so this is a 3 delta function in k, OK? So again, this is a straightforward generation. 
So if you have multiple harmonic oscillators, so if you have considered the multiple harmonic oscillators before, and then the A between the different harmonic oscillators, because K prime are just here just corresponding to, essentially you have, uh, yeah, here it just is, essentially you have infinite number of harmonic oscillators, and each one of them labeled by a K, okay? Uh, so this is just like, so essentially we find, yeah, let me just write it here. So from those commutation relation, we conclude we conclude this theory when we quantize after we quantize it become an infinite number independent harmonic oscillators, decoupled harmonic oscillators. Harmonic oscillators labeled by continuous parameter k. So k is yeah, k is the wave number. Okay. So for each k, there is a. And a and uh, uh, so between uh, between a uh, a themselves it's zero between a dagger it's zero but a a dagger they not equal to zero and uh, uh, so this is again the continuum generation of one okay this is a continuum generation of one uh, uh, because you have a continuous uh, variable yes. Yeah, then you cannot say for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, no, but uh, but uh, you see the quantization condition is in quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics, T and X are not on the same footing. You can require your action to be uh, X and T to be on the same footing. Once you start to quantize your theory, and then T will have a pronounced role. No, 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 no. no. Uh, the canonical computation relation have to be imposed at equal time. Other questions? Good. So, um, yeah. So, so, so essentially, we just get, and now it's just trivial. Okay. So, so you can just build up your Hilbert space. Essentially, you just have infinite number of harmonic oscillators. Okay, you just have infinite number of harmonic oscillators. And there's no surprise you get infinite number of harmonic oscillators because we mentioned that this field theory can be actually written as a continuum limit of these particles on the chain, which in these eight or three examples, uh, you know that's just a harmonic oscillator. Once you uh, uh, find the normal mode, they're all just a, a, a bunch of harmonic oscillators. And this is just a three-dimensional version of that. Okay. And now we will, yeah, today we are uh, uh, running out, uh, 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 out of time. So next time we will see that each excitation of the harmonic oscillator can be interpreted as a space-time particle. Okay, so that's the cool thing of it. And now you have this infinite number of uh, harmonic oscillator, and now you can act, uh, now you can define the vacuum and then act this uh, creation operators on the vacuum. And now you find each excitation actually corresponding to a particle and, uh, and has the uh, 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 corresponding to a relativistic particle. And that's how you can have actually arbitrary number of particles in this theory. And uh, yeah, because you can uh, excite as many times as you want. Okay, each excitation is a particle. Good, good, okay. So, so I think it's a good time. Yeah, we are two, two minutes, I think early, but I think it's a very good place to, to break.